for the most part, but never say all the time and science because you never know something could happen, you know, whatever. And so we're going to say for the most part, all right? When muscle contraction occurs, muscle contraction occurs in groups. You'll have a group of muscles doing one action and another muscle, group of muscles doing the opposite. They work in opposition. In the stretch reflex, this is when if the muscle gets stretched, there's something that wants to fight to bring it back into contraction. So, good example. You're in my class and you're just so bored and you're like, hey, well, Okay? That's a good example. Nodding off, and I guess so you don't just totally fall over on the floor or whatever. The body will, if you, okay, I've got I to gotta bring that head back up. It helps to also stabilize joints. And, yes, for this reflex, what did I say with DSE and the other reflex? Integration center. That means that reflex happens at the level of the spinal cord. This reflex is going to also happen at the level of the spinal cord, but information will travel up to the brain. Doesn't mean the brain has to create the response. What it did, it recognized that something happened. And it was like, oh, okay, let me put that in the file and file it away. A lot of what the brain does anyway. So, one of the things that will happen with some of these reflexes, they can help diagnose diseases. Um, go to the doctor for like a general checkup. They kind of do like a modified neurological check. They might tap the knee, tap the elbow, that sort of thing. Go to a neurologist. They're going to do a whole lot more. All right? Because it can actually help them determine if something is present. Now, when, we can, when, when some of these reflexes occur, we can have reciprocal inhibition. What does it mean to reciprocate? To give back. Okay? Neighbors brought me some blueberries. I'm going to make a blueberry cobble and I'm going to take some back to you. I'm going to reciprocate. Okay? Something occurred and something happened. That becomes important for certain activities in the body, believe it or not, with reflexes. It was really cool. Mainly saying, okay. That action happened, I can't have that happen, or, or the, the body whole body is just going to fall over. So if you do that, i got to do this so that this will occur. It's what we're looking at for reciprocal. In the knee jerk reflex, this will occur. Think about that activity when it happens. You're sitting, feet are dangling off, they come up, touch for that little tendon, and then boom, hit it with a little hammer, your foot kicks out just a little bit. There were groups of muscles doing that. Information that went in to get the effect out, okay, there were groups of muscles that had to do that. However, that required what of the five that we listed. In the first slide, we said four. 
Now, what do you see being present? My integration. The fifth one. The reason for that. In the first slide, I was only show, it only showed this connection with my quad. Right? Now, where are they showing another connection from? The hand. It required that one set of muscles do an activity. And the other one goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Can't have you just going off like that by yourself now. And no, 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 no. We got to control it. So one group of muscles did one thing. The other one was an antagonist. An antagonist over the time. Good. You know this. Oh, they're recognizing me. Okay. They work against you. Right? So that required that I had information come in, meet this neuron right here. What, 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 what? How many synapses do I now have? I've got two. So I've moved from being monosynaptic to being polysynaptic. Yes? more than one synapse and I'm now integrating and information will get registered with the brain. In some of these reflexes we have to make sure that we get information so that if the goal is to make sure the body remains upright that information travels like it should, that means if it means to pull away, if it means to rebalance the body, whatever the case might be. Now, look at the withdrawal reflex. What do you kind of notice about this one? Uh, all right, let's take a peek. I have a stimulus, piece of glass, stepped on it. Ow! I had to pull away from it. I had to have information from this side of the body to make me do that. But then I see that there's some crossing over that occurs because when I pull this foot away, what did this side of the body have to do? It had to stabilize or keep me upright. Does that make sense now in the picture? This one, definitely monopolis. Polis. Definitely polysynaptic. And it crossed over. Kind of cool, right? Now, that also involves what we say the cross extension reflex. Because if I had to pull away, something had to support for me to be able to stand on the other leg. There are actually exercises that work this way. Because you know, doing that sort of stuff. And there's actually dancing, contralateral dancing. Y'all ever heard of that? Oh, trust me. Got a friend talked me into that one. I'll never know you. That was like the hardest workout I think I had ever had. I've kind of mentioned these little specialized fiber where we talked about the muscle spindles. The other one that we have are some little tendon organ. See how these are located right on the tendon? And once again, their job 
make sure overstretching does not occur. Because that can make the joints get unstable, joints unstable, meaning the body's unstable. One of the biggest injuries we have is spinal cord trauma. Now this textbook is the older edition. Pretty sure those numbers are increased in the new edition. But according to this edition, anywhere from 10 to 12,000 people each year get paralyzed. A lot of times due to vertebral fractures. Ever heard anybody say they fractured their vertebrae? Okay, that's actually, that, that can be a, a little, well, painful, of course, but that can be pretty serious in its own right. Um, usually, it's males at younger ages. They tend to attempt more. Um, about 55% of what we get occurs, I'm sure that number's way up now, texting and driving. If the spinal cord gets completely severed, that is called complete transaction. Boom. All the way across. Alright? You get loss immediately below the level of injury. If it occurs in the cervical region, that means out all this area below it. it occurs thoracic, lumbar, Everything below it will lose motor control. It also will begin to affect the internal organs below the level of the injury. For example, people who, depending on what area of the cervical area that might have gotten harm, might have to be on a breathing tube for the rest of their life. Just depends on where it occurs. When we get paralyzed, if it's paraplegic, both lower limbs are affected. Quadriplegic, all four limbs, that means arms and legs. Hemi means on one side of the body, because hemi means half. Paresis is where we might have partial weakness in arms or legs. So spinal cord trauma is one of the biggest that we face, one that you'll see pretty pretty often. That ends chapter 13.